And if you look at the verse before it in in uh, Matthew chapter nine, the last verse, he he was talking about sending people. Pray ye, uh, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers. And then look at the next verse in chapter ten, the first verse. And what happens? He called his disciples. Yep. You notice there's an end in the beginning. What's that's additional to it? Sometimes chapters rely on the chapter before it, and many times. You have to remember, so you have to look at it. This is a historical account, and, uh, but when you get to like the letters of Paul, uh, people read them like textbooks, and they're supposed to be written, read like letters. They're letters. This is here is a, a written as an account, and, and the Lord wants you to get the spiritual things out of it. And he said, I'm going to call these disciples. Then what did he do? He gave him power. Now everybody adds everything in. They say, well, he has to do this to be an apostle. No, no, no. He just has to have the power. That's what it says. You've got to realize that. Don't start adding stuff in. Paul's, gonna, Paul's in his letters. He's going to have a problem all the time. You know what Paul's problem is? Paul's problem is he's got to convince the people all the time that he's an apostle. Yeah. They didn't believe him. That's why in his letters he's like, I'm an apostle. He says, oh, didn't, I, didn't I do these things? Didn't, you don't believe me that I saw this, that I saw the Christ? Do you do, not believe these things? You know, uh, so people grab that and they stuff it in there. That is not what God said. He gave them power. He gets 70 other guys. You know what he does? He gives them power. That's what he does. He gives them power. What's that? That power. Uh, you know, today you're an ambassador. Why? God gave you power. He said after that the, whole, the, the Holy Ghost come upon you, you'll be witnesses. And, and all I hear about it today is everything that's carnal and not anything that's spiritual. Amen. Why can't you just take the power that he gave you to be a witness Amen. and not take the power and try and play with it? Yeah. you got people walking around. I'm talking Bible believers walking around going, I'm led by the Spirit. I can feel it. No, you can't. <laughs> this is not Star Wars and the Force, and you are not Luke Skywalker. <laughs> That's not how the Holy Ghost works. <laughs> That's right. Amen. So uh, then we had talked about what they were preaching. They preached a different message. What's that kingdom of heaven is here? That's what they're uh, doing. There's a kingdom message. There's a king, and he's present. Look, he is prophet, priest, and king. In, 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 in the, over there in Jerusalem, you know what, who he was called? He's called the king of the Jews. He was a little baby. Why do you think Herod wanted to kill him? Because he's a king. My kingdom's at hand. He's the only one that can take that kingdom. He's, he's the one. And uh, he, he makes sure they know that gives them and tells them, look, I'm going to send you as, uh, I'm sending you out there. You'll be as, well, as sheep. As sheep. He didn't say you are sheep. He said you're as sheep. Okay, what's that mean? Uh, you're going to go out there uh, amongst these. You're, although you're apostles, uh, you're not supposed to be doing any harm in the midst of those people. You know, we're not physically taking over. It's a spiritual thing, and, and uh, the, 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 he wanted them to preach it. He wanted to make a decision for themselves. See, God isn't a Calvinist. He doesn't force it upon anybody. Amen? And then he told them in verse number 17, he said, what to them? You're going to go out there, but guess what? Uh, you're going to have uh, you're going to have persecution. They're going to scourge you in the synagogues. Uh, why not? Jesus was. It says in verse 18, and you should be brought before governors. Jesus was. And kings, Jesus was. And it says, uh, for how? For my sake. Uh, for a testimony against them and against the Gentiles. I mean, Jesus gets in there uh, even at his time. And it says uh, before Pontius Pilate gave a good witness. You know what some of the good witnesses? People don't even realize he obeyed the law when he was standing there. Look, God says you can... You can, uh, <coughs> you can obey the law like we're, our, our main law is a constitutional law, then we have statutory laws, then we have case law. Today they do it backwards, it's case law, then it's, uh, then it's whatever they think. But you have to understand the main authority in our country is, is of course, as far as a government is concerned, is the Constitution which relies on the Declaration because we have to know where the rights come from, which is from, by our Creator, and then with that, it goes to the Bible. Why? How would you know the Creator? Even James Madison, when he when he authored the document, said uh, that it was invalid without the King James Bible 
and the Ten Commandments. That was his statement when he brought it forward. They believed what they did. What was the first resolutions they were, they were putting out? 1792, the resolution to print the Bible, which at that time they called the Atkin Bible. And the reason why was because Atkin was the pub, was the printer. So they put out the Atkin Bible, which is the Bible that you have in your hands right now. The Aiken Bible, or the Atkin Bible, whichever one you want to say. It was uh, the resolution of 1792 done by Congress. Amen. Yeah. Congress. Yeah. That means, guess what? It's actually still in effect until they take it away. Yeah. And that, that resolution said that the Bible should be read in, in schools and taught in schools yes. and taught to the people. Yep. We are doing our children today a disservice yeah. Yeah. today. So now we come into where we uh, had left off, in, and we'll start in, um, we'll start in verse number 19. We'll most likely uh, try and get down to 33 to 434. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children uh, shall rise up against their parents and cause them, their parents, to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endured to the end shall be saved. Father, we thank you, Lord God, and love you. Help us with the scripture this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, in verse number 19, he says, but they're going to deliver you up. Uh, and you know, i got to tell you something. Every time I even think of this, I already can see everybody here uh, in their bathroom mirror uh, giving themselves a speech. You say, why, don't you always do that? You prepare for what you do a lot of times on your own. Uh, usually it's after it's already happened. You're in, you're in there saying, I could have said this, I could have said that, and stuff like that, looking like a fool in your mirror. Uh, went over that last night, I actually preached that. Uh, but you, you got to realize something. Uh, um, you, you, you are preparing, and I, and I think that's a great thing, because that stuff gets in you and gets into your soul. By word have I hid in my heart that I shall not sin against thee. You're supposed to hide that word in your heart. Okay, why? Because the Lord can use it. Amen. He can use it. Amen? Amen? You'd be submissive. He can use it. Look, um, these lightning bolts that make these people say things is not, is, is not true, people. Uh, he tells them, to, he tells every, every preacher, a uh, preacher gets in and says, study to show thyself approved unto God. And what's God telling you? If you ain't studying, don't expect anything. Uh, no different than, look, if, if you think that you can only have one hour a week and think that's going to be good for you to get fed in a church house, you, you, got, you, came, to the, you came to the wrong Lord. Uh, he's got multiple tables to sit down at. You need to sit down at those multiple tables. Amen. 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 You have to go home and you've got to read. Why? Because reading gets it into your soul. Yes, your body... This physical brain you have, yes, that's got problems. And you all know it. Uh, anybody over 50? Uh, everybody, which is about everybody here. Okay? Um, where's your car keys? You know? My phone. But I know how you guys are. You get up in the morning and where's the car keys? Where's this? Where's that? You don't even know. You don't even know what happened last night. Now all of a sudden you're trying to memorize scripture altogether, right? The only thing you can do is repetition with scripture. Uh, and still you'll lose your car keys. Yeah. You, we, we, get, we have problems up here as you get old. God understands it. I mean, I've seen people in the hospital who were saved people. And they, they go under and, and, and you have to understand they get like dementia and stuff like that. And they start saying things. You know what? I hear people go, well, I don't know if they're saved. Are you kidding me? They just have physical problems. Yeah that are affecting them inside the same person. Stop questioning what had happened because when God saves you, it's eternal. You have an eternal God. If he saves you, it's eternal. If he gives you something which is salvation, guess what? It's eternal. You can't even give it back. Save to the uttermost. Amen? He says, look at verse 20. He says, for it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit, look, the Spirit of your Father 
which speaketh in you. That is the coolest thing. Uh, go to Job, uh, Job 32. How does that work? In Job 32, a, a young preacher by the name of Elihu, he had something good to say about this. Uh, yes, he isn't the uh, he is God's recording what he said, but I can tell you, the Lord must have given him this one. We know that he, he lied a few times in that same uh, chapter about Job, uh, but right here, God's given this one to him. It says in verse number uh, seven, it says they should speak. See, I know you got it marked. Because that's how God works with you, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Okay? He says they should speak. Why? Uh, people with uh, older people, they got some wisdom in them. And years, they're going to speak. Multitudes of years, they're going to speak. Why? Because that's what you've got these scars on your face for, these scars on your body. What's that called? Experience. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's hard to have preachers that are young. They get up and, you know, they got a lot of energy and they're very entertaining. And we listen for God's word because it's his scripture and everything. But let me tell you something, it's hard when you have a young guy who has no experience, hasn't gone through anything, and then the next thing you know, somebody somebody uh, passes away. He hasn't seen death that much. Right. It's going to be tough for him to counsel widows and stuff like that if he has no years of experience. Uh, God, uh, the Lord uses your experience through life. He uses a man. In, and, and, and i got to say, in spite of his problems. Amen. But look at that next verse in 8. It says, but there's a spirit in man, right? Yes. And the inspiration, the only other time it's used in the Bible, this is the first time, inspiration of the Almighty giveth what? Understanding. Understanding. What's going on? Well, well, every one of you has a spirit inside of you. It's the spirit of man, right? Each individual. And God's spirit wants to work on that. And if you allow it to work on you, you can say things, and you'll be saying them, but it's God's spirit inside that's actually doing that. Amen? In spirit. In. In. Inspiration. Look, these scholars came along and made it into something to say, God breath. Okay? And they think that God is breathing or something on what they say. No, no, no. In spirit. Just like if you had uh, the word, they made up the word conspire, con spirit, against the spirit. In spirit. That's an inside thing. When uh, Pastor Roscoe gets up, he's going to preach today, right? And what's going to happen is God's already God has already prepared him. I don't know how long ago, but he's prepared and he put his and he put some spirit in him. Spirit in spirit, just like iniquity. You have it in you. In iniquity, it's inside. And when you move it outside, it becomes transgression. Okay, but in spirit, what happens next? Expiration. Expire. See? Spirit. There's a spirit in there. Amen. Amen. Inhale, exhale. But in spirit. It's in. Uh, that's why you would want your preacher to uh, have a clean life. Why? Because so God can use him. You want a clean vessel because out of the mouth is going to come the issues of life. Amen? Amen. And going back to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Uh, he says 21 and the spirit shall and the brother excuse me and the brother shall deliver up the brother uh, to death uh, we see that happening now it's going to get even more intense I mean they're moving very fast on things yeah. people are going to be giving up their families soon amen we see it coming he says and the father uh, the child I mean this is happening in families uh, and the children shall rise up against their parents. That's happening all the time. Yeah. That's why we have a, a definite problem with child protective services where a kid has an opinion against an adult. Mm -hmm. If they have a good house, I mean, where is the person who actually goes to the house and has to do it? Why do they have, now listen, why do they have a standard key uh, template to go by when they should be going by what they see and being a mature person? Uh, they go to get an education. The problem with education is they don't teach you how to be a, a parent. To go in and actually evaluate a parent. You see, that's why God's so much better. Look, this is how actually that should run. It should have run like this. They should have came down to the church. And they should talk to their pastor. You say, why? They don't go to church. They should be. There was a day when everybody yeah. on these streets was hitting church, man. 
the community wanted to be a part of the church. Now we're we got a lot of these churches that want to be a part of the community. We don't. Yeah. Amen. We want them to come out of the community now. Right. Amen. Amen. And um, but he says something uh, here, mm -hmm. and and look, he say, he's talking about families here and cause them to be put to death. Look over at verse number 36 in the same chapter. It says, a man's foes. A man's foes shall be they of his own what? Oh. Household. Imagine Cain and Abel. Brother rose up against brother. Envy. Mm -hmm. Delivering them up for envy. Uh, Jesus was delivered up for envy. He had two brothers in John chapter 7. Jesus had two brothers that, and family. They were picking on him. Uh, you, why don't you go down to Jerusalem, you big shot? You don't need to. This is only little Nazareth. Get down to Jerusalem. You can do those things. That's how. He's the Christ. They sat around him. He never did anything wrong. They couldn't observe that. You know what they saw? Goody two shoes. Because he was obedient. And, and you have to understand something, people. That shows you something. Jesus wasn't running around doing miracles as a kid. He didn't do one miracle until Canaan turned the water into wine. Now think about it. He had brothers. They, they'd have, believe me, they would have been peer pressuring him to do magic tricks. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah he had two brothers that were apostles. We found that out. He had two brothers that weren't, that weren't even saved. And you had some of his family. Look, his mom was saved, but she she had a problem. What's that problem? She was a, she had a husband that was a good man. What's that? He obeyed the law. He was picked because he was going to bring that child up, make sure that child was down at the temple when he was supposed to be. That's why God picked him out. He was a good man. You know, a lot of people don't give Joseph the due his worth. The guy was a good guy. That's why God picked him. I'm going to have my son go down. Why? Kid can't walk at one year old. Take him down to the temple. I need somebody to take him down there. Why? That's where he's supposed to be. Amen? So he picked somebody like Joseph like that to take that boy down to the temple and to raise that boy. And it's got to be hard to raise a child that's not yours and to raise him like the Lord would want. How, where were they? they had their religion. It was a Jew's religion. They took him down it, to the temple and everything. That's a Jew's religion. By the time Jesus comes up and he starts making a, 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 a commotion in the towns, there's Mary standing outside. Look, we got a good religion. You're not so, what are you doing? You're turning the world upside down. This religion, this is pretty good stuff. You don't think this hangs on? They go all the way down to the end when Jesus is in Matthew, just before Matthew 24. 24 what do they do? They start showing them the building. See, we got a pretty good, we've been doing this for a while. Marveling at the stuff. And what's Jesus? That's going to go away. And there's, there was his mom and even his brothers and sisters. Uh, they were without. What's that? that? It wasn't that they weren't saved. It's just that they're seeing things just like you. You're saved. You don't want, you don't want change in the church. But if we see something in the scriptures and we say, they don't. People say, wait a second. We've got we, we to gotta say our father every week. We, gotta, we, gotta, we only do the offering this way. We, you know, this is the things that we... We, we start to grab a part of that religion and, and then somebody else comes in and he says, hey, 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 that's the way we're doing it. We're just going to put a box over there with a hole and if you want to put money in, go ahead. Or, you know, we don't do that anymore. We, we got a new, we got, we got something else. As long as he doesn't go and degrade what God has put in there. And believe me, the hymnal is just, that hymnal is, like it or not, there's inspiration in there. Not just because there's just verses. I don't think God's going to turn around, don't sing them or don't sing them things when you get to heaven. He's been having that right next to the book for years. Why? Because he wants you to enjoy yourself here. Amen. Amen. But you can't build on music. That's right. Now, look at verse number, uh, uh, better yet, let's real fast, real fast. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter 17. Just because we were talking about family. 17. And we'll have a double victory in this. I think 17 is the number of victory. So we'll have a double victory. 17, 17. Seventeen, seventeen. the Bible says, A friend loveth at all times. Now watch. And a brother is born for adversity. Now that, that can be taken two ways. 
You see, you can a brother is born to adversity. We know that brothers, two brothers, get into a, a little bit of scuff. It's the greatest ones you ever watch. Get on, get a seat for that. I mean, boy, they really pound each other. You know, and then, but there's also this other thing. A brother is born for adversity. What's that? Sometimes two are better than one. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's okay to be out there by yourself street preaching, but it's sure better when somebody else is out there with you. You know, and you got some backup. He says a brother is born for to uh, for adversity. Yeah, we get together. But two, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? It's great when they be agreed. Now they got teammates. Amen. Uh, now look at uh, verse number uh, twenty-two, and he says, "And ye shall be be hated of all men for my name's sake." I'll oh, just put the press involved. Just get the press involved. Why they? They're the greatest uh, evil preachers there ever was. All twenty-four-seven make you hate somebody, don't they? Running that stuff all day make you hate somebody. I mean, the greatest prosecutors that we've we've had the last years are uh, were Rudy Giuliani and uh, Sidney Powell. Yes. Sidney Powell is a fabulous uh, DOJ prosecutor. Now uh, she's a she's a Looney Tune. Why? Because the press put it out 24/7 that they are. Michael Flynn. General, Lieutenant General, probably, and I know this for experience, that man is the highest and best intelligence, uh, military intelligence uh, individual probably in, in the country, possibly in the whole world, that guy. Mm -hmm. Now he's a loony too. You know why? Because he has the truth. He knows where all the bodies are buried. That's right. That's right. He was doing it for years. Get rid of him. Why? They just go 24-7. You know, put the press out. Hey, you, you, well, you know, look, you could be the target. It doesn't take much. All it takes is a family member. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many of you, when you got saved, all of a sudden you start talking to people about Jesus and bam, they start going against you. Let me ask you a question. Don't you think they're doing that at their house, building up on you? Yeah. What is that? That's called the press, man. The press. He says, uh, but he says it. Uh, here, but he that endureth to the end shall be what? See. Now, right away, you got some guy that comes in and says, "Say, see, you got to you got to stay to the end to get saved." You, you know what you got? You got a Looney Tune preacher that says that because he's talking about your physical body right there. If you endure to the end of these things, you'll be saved out of them. What's that? You want to endure uh, these persecutions? He says that that's how you're saved out of. Them. Not saved as far as salvation. He's talking about saved as far as you. Your carnal life uh, in that area. Okay? Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, uh, Judas. Judas is in this, in this passage in, in chapter 10. And if you would endure to the end, well, uh, Judas was there. What's, what happened to him? He died, right? And guess what? He was lost. I've chosen, chosen you 12. One of you is the devil. And then later on he says, I've kept you all uh, but one. You know, uh, Jesus came to save he, that which was lost. Was lost. Judas is lost. That's the difference. When he says, not everybody's clean. One of you is lost. That was Judas, he said. He's lost. That's a historical look at it. Uh, verse 23. But when they persecute you in this city flee into another for verily I say unto you ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the son of till the son of man uh, be come he says uh, here's here's the term changeover on all that uh, when they persecute you here just go to another city what the Lord's saying is is uh, uh, he's he's basically giving you a a, a way of being a guerrilla fighter with this with uh, preaching, but if they don't throw you out of this tent, they throw you out. Look, it's like this: you, we have laws and rules in this country for free speech, so we can preach on the streets and everything. But sooner or later, they come out and believe me, they come out with the leaders. They they try and get rid of you, and um, and and sooner or later, they're going to send. The, they're just going to get so agitated, they send the cops. Now you don't have to stop until he lays hands on you. Hello? Yeah. Did I say that wrong? What's that? Look, you got it. You better read Romans. Read Romans 13 because a whole lot of preachers that are out there aren't reading it. I'll give you another one. 
when all that stuff hits and we have to close our, and they, they had to close their doors, okay? People were closing their doors because of this uh, phony corona stuff, mm -hmm. okay? You know where they were, I was watching? I was watching preachers and uh, churches run to lawyers. Oh, that's good. God didn't want them to run the lawyers. Yeah. This is his church. You know, the only thing I, I think you really, to me, the only thing you need a lawyer for is to set up your church uh, because they need it that way. But other than that, I need him. I go to God. It's his church. If he ain't going to fix the situation, it's just it, it, it put it on his shoulders. Amen. That's what we did. We got we came in here. What was the first thing we did? We came in here and had a prayer meeting. Yep. Yeah. Came in here and had a prayer. Do, and did we close? Nope. No. Why? I couldn't find a verse in there. It told us to. I'm not beating on anybody for it. Uh, it was so fast, people were like, what's going on? What's going on? You know, that's, that's, we got caught by surprise. We're not surprised anymore. No. This is no surprise anymore. We've been reading our Bibles for a long time. We knew this was coming. Don't be surprised when it comes. It's going to get worse. Yep. Your, your deal is, are you in the game or are you out of the game? Are you going to the judgment seat of Christ and to be able to, at least when the Lord says, thank you, just took a stand. Doing all you can. Remember the verse. Doing all that you can to stand. You have to, you can turn around and you have to understand. You obey the powers. What's the powers? The powers uh, that's behind all these people is the Constitution, the Declaration, and then the Bible. Yeah. Bible is the top. And it's not the final authority. It's all authority. Yeah. Why do we, why do we, that, when you say final authority, well, the Bible's the final authority. That's great and that's good for you know, preaching, and everybody goes, yay, King James Bible, stuff like that. But let me tell you something. That gives you authority up until the final piece. No, God can stop it in the middle. He has all authority through his book. Yes. And the preacher knows that. Amen? Yes. So, he says, you flee to another. Be like a guerrilla fighter. Get to another. Why? Uh, you ain't going to do anything in jail. You go to the local jail for the local town, and that's where they're going to put you at first. They call it the roundhouse. You ain't doing nothing in there. Guess what you're not doing? You're not preaching on the streets anymore. You might as well just go to the next corner if it comes to that point. Amen? They don't want to put you in jail, believe me. They just want to get you, get you out of that area. Go to the next area. Hey, down in Watertown, go to Thompson Park if you can't get it on the street. Go to the next road. Start banging doors. Do whatever you can. That's what God's looking at. What, what are you doing beside that? Uh, he says here, he says, uh, now, now we get this portion. He says, flee to another city. Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man come back. There's more cities everywhere. The, people grab that piece and start going, well, the, the apostles are coming back. They're going to preach the, before Jesus comes back in the tribulation. Is that what it says? No. I mean, why are you taking it where Jesus didn't put it? He's saying, look, there's enough cities out there. You just keep going. Well, I didn't like this, so go to the next city. Amen. Yeah. So, he says, uh, verse number 24, he says the disciple is not above his master, for the servant of or he says, nor the servant above his uh, Lord. If I do it, you can do it. The disciple is not above his master. Look, it's like this. I, I worked for Dewey Stewart. I was actually his disciple. I didn't have a problem with that. I was his servant for uh, a year and a half. I actually went up to him when I first when I first walked into his church and decided this is the place we're going to be. I walked into his. I walked up to him and I said, "Look, I'm here now. What do you want me to do?" Amen. What 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 am I supposed? To, I'll do anything you tell me to do. I even grabbed my wife and said, "She's going to do what you tell her to do too." She was like, "What?" What do I? <laughs> we were good servants, my wife and I, to, an, to, a, to another guy. Why? I'm not greater than the master. He's the pastor. I'm not great. As long as he's not trying to kill me, I can do what he says to do. And I trusted him because why? He's a good man. He's a good man. Uh, he says, watch, next verse. He says, it is, uh, it is enough for the disciple to be as his master. It's it's good. You know, he, what he's saying there is uh, persecution is a privilege. I mean, imagine that. Uh, persecution is a, is a privilege, people. That's what he's saying. 
He says, uh, it is enough for the disciple to be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house, the devil, Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Amen? You're known by your leader. Look, at the great white throne, believe me, they're gonna, he's going to bring the great and small. What's that? He's bringing the leaders up first. Get up here, Pope Paul 23 or whatever your face is. Ignatius and all them get up here. Why? Because there's a lot of people that are just following you, and I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to do this right now. Hey, Mother Teresa, get up here. You got a lot of people out there thought you were this and that and this and that. Come on now, your turn. You imagine what's going to happen to Great White Throne when they start going down. It's going to be fast after that. They didn't make it. I'm, I've been following that. You're going too. Now look at us. Joshua followed Moses. How'd he turn out? Pretty good, huh? Go we'll we'll follow a good man for a while. Go we'll follow a good man. Amen. And he says, uh, verse 26, fear, the, fear them not, therefore. You notice how a lot of times the Bible, fear them not. He doesn't even put, he doesn't even compass, he doesn't say exactly, I hear people say, who's them? Don't worry about it. You know who them is. Them. If I meet them, don't fear them. Don't fear the, the, he's saying like Herod, don't fear Herod. The top dog, doesn't matter who fear. Don't fear them. He says, don't fear the press. He says, fear them not, therefore. Why is that? For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not uh, be known. Imagine when we sit at the great white throne to get a person like Pelosi up there. He says, Nothing's going, everything's going to be revealed right now. We're going to be like, wait, let me get over here. <laughs> i got to see this one. I've got to tell you something. It's great to be saved. Why? Because my closet's over there, and I, get it. I can actually say, he's not going to reveal that to you guys. Yeah. You know, because, man, if he does, I'm in trouble. And so are you. Don't <laughs> act like you ain't got a bone falling out here or there. <laughs> Amen. And he, he says, don't fear them. Now watch. He says, he says, they shouldn't be hid. Verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. Now the Lord turned around. Remember he said, uh, he said, stay in the, you're the children of the light. Walk in the light while it's there. Don't go in the dark. Now, now look what he just said. He says, what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Let's go over to Acts 26. Acts 26. Paul's going to be speaking here. It's one of my wife's favorite passages right here. Mm -hmm. Acts 26. And uh, let's look down starting in verse number 15. Acts 26 and 15. Paul's speaking. The Lord had just called him and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest me? That was in 14. Uh, it's hard to kick against the pricks. Your heart is the problem, Paul. You're kicking your heart's pricked in the heart. He says you're fighting against it. It's hard to fight against your heart when it knows the truth, and the truth's been given to it. A lot of people think that's kicking against the church. No, no, no. Look up the word prick. They were pricked in the heart. Amen? Uh, verse number 15, and I, and I said, Who art thou, a Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. He didn't know who he was. He just knew he was his Lord. Now he's identified. And he said, and, he, and Jesus identifies himself. He says, but rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister, number one, and a witness, both of, the, of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering there, uh, excuse me, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now... I send thee to do what? To open their eyes. Now watch. And to turn them from what? Darkness, darkness to, light. to light. Okay, I want to turn them from dark. What's that? You were in darkness. 
what you heard in darkness that brought you to the light, he says, you go preach that. What's that? You go preach the gospel. Because it brought you from darkness into the light. You were in darkness. You heard it in darkness. And then you came to the light. That's what he's trying to tell you. The reason why he's saying, don't go in, you know, hey, look, don't go into a dark bar and start preaching the gospel. They're not, they're drunks in there. You can get them out of there, but you want to speak to somebody that has a little bit of sober mind. Now, look, I've been the drunk in the bar. I don't care about your gospel. I, I, I've been, I'll, 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 tomorrow morning I'm, 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 I'm worshiping a toilet. Look, look, people, you got to understand something about drunks. They wake up in the morning, and they're not happy with themselves. They just go back to it. That's what Proverbs tells you. i got bruises and wounds. When shall I seek it again? As soon as I'm sober. Yeah. Sometimes it's still, and you know yourself. You know, if you've ever been a drunk, let me tell you something. You're still aching, and you still walk back into there at 7 o'clock or whatever at night. That's a drunk does. Who has them wounds? Well, all the drunks, they don't care. They don't even care about how they got them. They're throwing up in the morning and drinking by night. I've been in the bar, I've been in the bars drunk knowing I was a called preacher and a saved Christian. And get up in the middle of the bar and start preaching. I've done it multiple times. <laughs> There's bars I can't even go to anymore. I, I, down there, I couldn't even get back, I couldn't go in. When I was a drunk. Why? Because that's what I did. I was a weirdo, man. <laughs> Hoorah. Isn't that something? The world is in the darkness. Hey, hey, verse number uh, 28, he says, and, and fear not them which kill the body. That's persecution. They kill the body. Don't worry if they can kill your body. Don't worry about man in front of you. But are not able to do what? Kill, Kill the soul. Hey, they take that and they use that for jazz out there. You can't kill the soul of a man. And your thoughts and this movement. No, no, no. He says real life. He can't kill the soul. No man can. All souls are mine, said the Lord. You ever hear somebody say, you can sold his soul to the devil? How can you do that? All souls are mine, God said. The soul of each poor, the rich and the, and the poor. They're both gods. It's God who has this power. He owns the soul. Just so you know, the spirit, that energy that makes a person breathe and, and involuntary movements, guess what? That's the spirit. And God says he takes that from them. Right in chapter 12 of Ecclesiastes. Pulls it right out of them. Then what happens? Guess what happens then? Once the spirit's gone, the soul goes, whoop! And guess what happens to the soul? It departs the body. The spirit is like a battery inside the soul. The soul is the essence of the body. Rachel was having a child. Was having a child. Benjamin. It says. It says in there. And as her soul was departing from the body, then there's parentheses. That's God going to explain it. What's that? For she died. The soul departs from the body. A person dies. Their body dies. Goes back to the ground. They're still out there somewhere. Hopefully, they're not in hell. In heaven. There's only two places you can be after that. Amen. Heaven or hell. No limbo, uh, no waiting rooms, uh, no in the grave, no in still inside the body. The body's going to be eaten up. It's going to become nothing. Amen? Amen? The bodies just matter. He says, now watch, he says, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy the soul and the body. Where? In hell. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. But the body doesn't go. Why did he say in hell? Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna get that together here. Revelation chapter uh, twenty, and uh, look down at uh, verse number. We'll start at verse number eleven, twenty eleven. And God says, and I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. They're going to be just suspended, stand, just there suspended. And he says, And I saw the dead, 
small and, and great stand before God, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according uh, to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up, uh, were, were delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire, this second death. And whosoever was, was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Death and hell go into the lake of fire. What's that tell you? Somebody, whoever's resurrected, even at the great white throne, body and soul, goodbye. Right there, they're delivered up. And what happens? They get cast in the lake of fire all together like that. You better be worried about that guy. Who can do that? Who's that? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All power is given unto him. You should be glad and grateful today you're still in the first coming of Jesus Christ because his body's still here. Because once that's done, it starts the second coming. That's why God put those feasts there. He has four feasts and then he has three feasts. What's the one feast that the, the Jews never Never celebrated in the Bible, the Feast of Weeks. What's that, Pentecost? They missed it. You understand what God's trying to show you? They missed it. You're in, and God puts 2,000 years in between there, and then Pentecost is going to come 2,000 years, and guess what? You're out of here. That's where we're gone. That's Pentecost, and then what happens? A whole lot of mess. A whole lot of mess after that. I'm not worried about that. You know why? I'm not going to be here. That's, right. That's why we preach the walk of the believer. Uh, that was the best wisdom that our preview had ever given me. Stop playing around with all the eschatology and start getting into the walk of the believer. Why? They're going to the judgment seat of Christ, and they sure uh, have, have something to do with that. You don't have nothing to do with this antichrist. You, know, you need to know more and more and more about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's good to be saved. All right, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we got to that point, and what he's going to talk about next is, uh, is, a, is about rejection and things like that, about how your importance of things, and we'll go over that next week. Uh, we'll stop at verse number uh, 28 like we did. Next week we'll start in 29, okay? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for our time. We thank you for speaking to us this morning. It's your book, and we know you work on it, Lord God, and work through your word. We thank you, Lord, for being uh, pity, uh, pitying us and, and being merciful to us this morning. Uh, let's have a good time in the services this, this morning. And, and I pray you bless the preacher who will preach unto us, Lord God, and be, he'd be filled with the uh, Holy Ghost to talk to us today. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's a take. <laughs>